Is life or death for Velt and the villagers fight back? In Rebel Moon Part 1, the villagers watched their leader be killed right before their eyes and stood by helplessly without a way to defend themselves. At the start of Rebel Moon Part 2, Korra, Nemesis, General Titus, Tarek, Gunner, and Milius return to Velt and have exactly five days to harvest grain and to train the villagers to be prepared for battle against the Imperium army led by the Risen from the Dead, Atticus Noble. Hey Splashers, welcome back to the channel and if you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. How in the heck are they supposed to be ready that fast? I guess you could train farmers to be fighters, but it's kind of crazy that you're able to train fighters in five days from people that have never fought before in their life. That's, you know, a wild development, but hey, I guess if anybody could do it, you know, the movies can. Anyways, General Noble is just as evil as you might remember. He's out for blood and wants Korra's head after she killed him and he had to be resurrected. Korra has these battles within herself, whether she's a good person or a bad person and how she ends up you know, coming to terms with the fact that she did some things that weren't really that great when she was under Regent Belisarius. But now, as she's redeeming herself, she's starting to get that confidence in the person that she is and how she handles things. Cora cuts her hair off before the battle starts in this film, and that just shows me that she means business and she's gonna do whatever it takes to handle things. But as I said earlier, the villagers had no intention of just laying down and taking it this time. They set traps, found weapons, and fought like hell for their survival. Would you fight for your survival as well? I know I sure would. Korra and the other warriors pull off the miracle of being prepped and ready for the Imperium Army's arrival. One of the parts that I really enjoyed in this film compared to part one was how each one of the warriors you got to know more about them and they each have their moment in the battle where they help the villagers of Velt overcome the Imperium troops. So each time you see the fight just engaging, someone else comes in with a major impact to help the villagers get ahead in the war even though this war seems like it's a never-ending battle for them. General Titus was absolutely amazing in this film. He redeemed himself from feeling disgraced after he lost his troops against the Imperium army and having to sit there and watch them die right in front of him. He taught these villagers how to become warriors and fighters and fight for their freedom and their planet. How more noble can that be? I definitely love the way that he was portrayed and how he grew himself with these people and became this you know, figure that he was known to be. He even stopped drinking. Excellent, excellent part of the film. The robot James that we saw in Rebel Moon Part 1 that was a train killing machine, you just see him lurking around throughout the film. I won't tell you guys what involvement he has, but his part is great to see because they expand upon his role and bring him out in this film. And he may even be something in the future in one of the next films, who knows? There is even a couple surprise warriors that come swooping in or flying in to save the villagers right in the nick of time. Every time you think that Velt is gonna be taken over and the people are all going to die, something great happens for their cause. I hate to say it, but a couple of the warriors do end up dying, but don't worry, I won't spoil it and say who it is. The biggest issue that most critics have with Rebel Moon is that it took influences from other space operas, especially Star Wars, but what do you expect? Star Wars is the holy grail of space opera, so of course there has to be some spillover in movies that come after it, because what else can you do? They've done everything under the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. For me, I especially enjoyed the twist on the lightsabers because they had these swords that were blue flamed and they were hot, so you couldn't just touch them with your bare hands, you had to wear gloves and you know make sure that you protect yourself to be able to use the blades, and those were excellent in the fights. So that was a good touch to keep it similar to a lightsaber, but also different in a way. I liked it. I was happy to experience the action in this film in theaters and find out more about each of the characters. Even though parts of the dialogue were just a little bit too long for my liking, seeing Nemesis open up about her backstory was excellent because you see her as a hardened woman who has been scarred badly in her past life, losing her child to war. And then also, Tarek's backstory reminded of Harry Potter scenes and I loved the way that they outlined it. His backstory was almost like its own movie. My only gripe about Rebel Moon Part 2 is that the beginning is slow as a turtle because the story is being tied together and the harvest of the grain is happening. If they could have sped up that process just a touch, I wouldn't really have much negative to say about the film. Atticus, Noble, and Korra have to clash again in Part 2, right? Yes, you're correct, they do. Zack Snyder executes the fights and explosions like usual, satisfying those of us who watch anything with his name on it and casual fans as well. I would give Rebel Moon Part 2 an A-. minus. Rebel Moon Part 2 Scar Giver is well put together, delivers the action we were longing for in Part 1, 
and leads us perfectly towards where part three is headed, a showdown with Regent Belisarius. The only reason I'm not giving it an A plus is that the story developed slightly slow. Outside of that, I would have been happy to give it an A plus. I definitely recommend you guys to watch Rebel Moon part two. If you've already watched the first one, this one is gonna be good for you. Even if you didn't enjoy the first one as much, I feel like you'll definitely enjoy part two and I see the critics giving this a higher rating. Let's discuss your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching Splashers and catch you on the next one.